Jennifer Williams. She was asking for some help. Jennifer said, I'm asking for some help finding my Range Rover from this man, Aaron Nichols, stole from me. He goes by many aliases, including Nick, Daniel, or Chris. He has conned many women and men, too, out of vehicles and large amounts of cash. Lives in Atlanta and frequents Detroit, Houston, and Vegas. If you have seen him or are a victim of his antics, please DM me at or email my attorney, Jamie Hernan at jamie at herninfirm.com or contact the Smyrna Police Department. There is an active investigation going on. Thank you in advance. Hashtag find my range. Hashtag American greed. Hashtag lawyered up. Hashtag repost. Hashtag justice will be served. Now, we gonna look. It's a lot. It's, uh, this story has taken so many twists and turns, and it's only been a day. It's only been a day. Now, Aaron Nichols have come out the woodwork. He done got online and he started posting it, uh, posting all these messy text text messages. And I don't know what it is about this week. This week, what is it? Tuesday? <laughs> what is this? Velvet? It's only Tuesday, and people are already releasing text messages. We just seen the personal insights of, of Nene Leaks and Skate Snake Gate. Now we seeing Jennifer uh Williams and her, you know, the man who allegedly finessed her out of this this uh Range Rover. Now these texts that he leaked apparently, you know, put her in a negative light. Now, before we get into the text. I want to hear what Jennifer had to say about Aaron Nichols because Jennifer been making the rounds. Jennifer been all over the place. Jennifer was on the Breakfast Club earlier today, and Jennifer actually posted a clip of her Breakfast Club interview with Angela Yee, her attorney, and another woman who claims to have also been scammed by this man. And she had, you know, a lot to say about it. Hold on, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna listen to a little bit of it. We had a relationship at one point, so I trusted him. Um, I gave him my car to basically put up and hold for me because obviously I can't drive two vehicles. And you know, when I got settled into my house, I asked him for my car back, and he would not give me my car back and stop answering my phone calls and my Range Rover basically disappeared. So what I come to find out in doing a little investigating, one, he told me his name was Daniel Nichols, which was a lie. His name is actually Aaron Nichols. And the way that I found that out was I had to actually Google his mother's obituary. And that's when I found what his real name was. I found this article on Lipstick Alley where I connected with Ramona and I realized that this man has been doing this for quite some time, actually probably 20 years or so. Wow. Okay, so just to break it down, so you guys have been dating at that time, were you still in a relationship? No. Okay, so this was like an ex, but you guys were still cool. So he was doing you a favor. Yes, and you know, I moved to Atlanta. I don't know a lot of people there. He was in the car business. And he was, you know, he was like, listen, I can hold a car for you. It's, it's not a big deal. And I was like, okay, like, great. I didn't have any way to put the car, and I was leaving out of town. So I figured, all right, well, I'll just give you my car to put up, not to drive around, but just to hold my vehicle. And then he just never gave it back. Now, some people were saying, I noticed, oh, well, don't you Google somebody when you're dating them? How do you not know this? Had you met any of his family members, any of his friends? And had you Googled the name that he gave you as his name? Yes, I did Google his name and nothing comes up because one is not his real name. He told me his name was Daniel Nichols. And what I have learned throughout this whole process is that he goes by different alias. And so I had met uh, one of his daughters but I mean, she wasn't gonna tell me his real name, you know, she calls him dad. So I met some people that were his friends, but he goes by Nick. So he doesn't even go by his real name because his last name is Nichols. So that's just kind of his nickname. Okay, so now you said you found this article on Lipstick Alley. Now, let's talk about this really quickly. Oh, 
child, we're going to get into some things. We're going to get into all of it. How about how you said there are 50 million Aaron Nichols? Okay. Well, if you Google Aaron Nichols, now that she know his name, Lipstick Alley comes up, child. A Lipstick Alley article comes up. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Hold on. From 2013. And oddly enough, this particular Lipstick Alley um, post from 2013, you know, I told you the internet keeps receipts. I told y'all that, you know, like I was telling y'all about straight from the eight, keeping all those receipts. The internet keeps receipts. So in 2013, there's an MO, this same particular man, you know, by somebody by the name of Aaron Nichols. I don't know if it's if it's a coincidence, if you know it's the same person. It said Aaron Nichols, aka Detroit Nick, aka Nick Clark, and some other aliases. And this particular person on Lipstick Alley, honey. Y'all know about Lipstick Alley. That's where everybody go. It says Aaron Nichols, aka Nick, is from Detroit originally, but currently lives in Atlanta coincidence i don't know he has lived and done business in los angeles las vegas miami and phoenix he claims he's an ex-football player he isn't he claims he's an ex-boxer he isn't he also claims he's in entertainment that is also a lie he is an ex-felon and steals from everyone he knows he's usually in a luxury car but it is more than likely stolen. He claims he is in real estate, but that basically means he steals people's identity, purchases houses, rents them for enormous amounts to drug dealers and pimps who can't afford it, but have no credit to legally rent and doesn't pay the mortgages. Oh, child. Oh, child. Wait. The ghetto, the ghetto. I'm up here scrolling. I didn't even let y'all see it. I'm up here scrolling and I didn't even let y'all see it. Hold on. Let me, let me. The ghetto. What is going on with the ghetto? Hold on. Y'all see that? Is this why I won't scroll up? Oh, I'm in the wrong thing. There it is right there. So it, it goes on to say he used these flashy cars to impress women and swindle them out of money. He quote unquote proposes to many of them, doesn't use condoms, has an accomplice, got her name in there, child. I didn't write this, who is the mother of his two daughters. At last count, he had another child with a woman named Emily from Detroit as well, who he moved to Atlanta with their daughter and hers from a previous relationship, a son in Las Vegas, about four daughters in Las Vegas, a daughter in Phoenix. He takes care of none of those children, blah, 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 blah. Now, whoo, child, the ghetto. Now, people are starting to drag Jennifer because this person, the Aaron Nichols person, who might be this person on Lipstick Alley and might not be, has released a slew of text messages that he claims are so explosive. And they show Jennifer, you know, was chasing him, that he didn't really steal the car, that they were in a relationship and it was mutually beneficial, that he gave her thousands of dollars. Let's get into his text messages for a second. Hold on. Let me get into uh Mr. Aaron Nichols' text exchange. Now, shout out to Ball Alert because Ball Alert posted the whole thing. I, I couldn't, I couldn't, child. Anyway, he said um, a big reason. Hold on. Let me put it up here. He said a big reason uh why I wanted to end things with Jennifer Williams is because she was such an ugly person on the inside and she was engulfed with fame and notoriety. She asked me to be a love interest on her TV show. I declined over and over. Every conversation was about basketball wives and just downing a lot of women. Some of these women ironically being the same ones in her comments supporting her right now. When we would be together, she would be on her phone the entire time scrolling social media, which I thought was very very childish. She also would create and leak stories to the media. Once she asked me if I knew someone who would release Evelyn Lazada daughters, Shania, whatever the girl name is, knew I was totally disgusted with her. All caps, honey. Then he tagged all the blogs, Hollywood Unlocked, Blot Alert, The Shade Room, Breakfast Club, See the God, DJ Envy, and Angela Yee. 
in addition to tagging all those people, he is, you know, he posted the text message. <laughs> He posted these text messages and apparently these text messages he feels, you know, implicates Jennifer, you know, saying that she is like some bitter woman who is just out to get him. So if you look at the text messages, I guess uh, Jennifer is in gray. He is in blue. Jennifer says, I hate these messy bitches. Evelyn made me want to slap the S-H-I-T out of her. I would have leaked her daughter's news. I could have exposed her ass. He says, come on, Jen. When they go low, you go high. Leave her kids out of it and keep it classy. She says, but I want to break them bitches, baby. All of them, especially Shani. She was talking S-H-I-T about me saying Shaq cheated on like it was a lie everyone knows he has kids behind her back and malaysia or should i say ghetto ass laquisha doesn't even have a mind of her own whatever evelyn and shunny says malaysia hops on board she licks their effing p <laughs> y'all know the words and then he goes i told you to get off the show anyways it's just not working anymore for you and you don't need the drama so he was all supportive. He was all nice while she was just, you know, going off in her text exchange, according to him, according to him. Now, he also sent these text messages saying that she is mad because I don't want her. Mad, bitter, liar. So these text messages seem to imply that she was texting him, cursing him out. Now, there, you know, there's no date, whatever. And, you know, they may be true. I'd have cursed the dude out time two, cursed him out time two. Like, that's what we do. So Jennifer, like, F you, Nick. You're a total dick. You've been sending mixed signals since day one. I tried to do all I can to show you how bad I wanted to, wanted to you, but now I'm glad I see you clearly. You're dead to me. You'll regret this. I'll ruin you. And then he goes, why are you always taking things to the extreme? I don't want to fight. Just want us to be cool. Why can't you respect that without get, with getting crazy? She goes, and this is another text message. It's not even from the same text thread because there's something above that, as you can see. It says, I don't give a F about any of that. I want all of my S-H-I-T back or I'm suing your ass and putting your own blast. You completely broke my heart. You were never serious about me and I kept overlooking all of the signs. F you, you'll regret effing with me. I have the power to make S-H-I-T happen. Oh, child. Oh, where's my water? I need, I need a water break. Oh. You said it sounds like a BS publicity stunt, Miss Patty. Is that what it sounds like? Oh, child, it's a lot. Let me let me give me some water. She was in her feelings. Uh, the real Patty, Patty, Patty. Oh, child, let me continue. Hold on, let me get my blue bit, my black bit. You said the te texts are fake, Melissa. I don't know. My, ooh, I'm a little parched. I'm a little parched at all this alleged thirst. I'm a little parched. You said it sounds fake. <laughs> Hold on. We got to look. We got to continue reading. We got to continue reading. Let me go back. Let me go back. Hold on. Uh, so Aaron says that Jennifer moved to Georgia to be with me. I told her not to, but she did it anyway. Mm. He continues. When I first met her, I told her I was not interested in being serious because I had just ended a relationship with my child's mother and I wasn't ready. But she continued to call and text me. It got to the point that I had to block her on social media. She begged me to follow her back in the past. I admit that I have just ghosted women without explanation, and that's left them very angry with me and wanting vengeance. But recently, since I've been seeing a counselor, Oh, God, this reads like a novella. Hold on. Since I've been seeing a counselor, I have tried to be better in how I end relationships with people. This is why I first tried to talk to hashtag Jennifer Williams face, face to face about wanting to end it. But she wouldn't take no for an answer. I ended up having to block her phone numbers, too. And not once did, did I ask for any car, jewelry, purse or any money back. She threatened to ruin me because I did not want to be with her. 
So he included this text message that proves that he says proves that he told her not to move to Atlanta because he she says allegedly when I was in LA you never had time for me so picked up and moved to Georgia thinking it would bring us closer together but instead you say you don't want to deal with me anymore total waste of time you make me hate ever missing you ever meeting you and he goes really wow. I've been nothing but good to you. I told you not to move here because I knew you wanted a real relationship and I didn't want the same thing. We can always remain friends and not make it all whatever else comes next. Now, I don't know about y'all. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Brenda, Brenda, that's where I am. You release all these text messages. You dropping all these receipts. You know she's a public figure and on a TV show. You know this is a deflection from, from the issue at hand. Where is the damn Range Rover? <laughs> Wait, I, I still haven't read what a Range Rover is. Let's continue. Let's keep reading. Let's keep reading, y'all. Well, I'm presenting all the evidence. Y'all going to look. Y'all going to take this to court. Um. So he's, here's some more text messages. Jennifer, can you call me? This was in November, child. It says, I don't like that I'm in the same state as you going through hell and you haven't even attempted to come see me in days. That's not cool. When you ask me for something, I do it, even if I have to go out of my way. You never even sent the list of buildings that I've been asking about for days. I'm just out here on my own for real. And then he goes, shaking my head why are you always complaining about stuff i and we don't know what he said nigga. why you didn't include all of i want to know what you said in response to what she said but anyway here's another one from whatever date and uh it say on something at the beginning then he goes i'm lying and then she probably was accusing him of being on something i don't know but then <laughs> she goes we had one or two but you are exaggerating. I think it's ridiculous that you have me blocked and I can't send you DMs, but people send you DMs about me. Make it make sense. And he says, I haven't gotten DMs about you in forever, Jay. I am so not exaggerating, LOL. Does that sound like a guy? I am so not exaggerating. I am so not exaggerating. That sounds like a girl to me. You be on one. And then it said, you just said people were, and I don't know what the rest is. And here go another tip. It's just all over the place. Have a safe trip back, Jen. I'm sorry. He said he's sorry for something. And then she says, I'm straight on you being rude. I didn't say for you to leave me alone. You don't check on me or call me. So it seems you've been left me alone. So I get it. That's why I said I'm straight. Clearly you are going through something that you are taking out on whoever. Okay. And I don't know what that proves, but just proves that she might have cared about his feelings. Uh, did this one look at 50 cents IG talking about tank shaking my head? Oh, and can you unblock me and follow me, please? And thank you. This was in October, so he's going backwards. He goes, No, sad face emoji. Shout out to Ben George. <laughs> LOL, you be bugging on IG, Jay. You know how many bad arguments we've had because of IG. And then she says, don't try it. That's BS. You just told me the other day you were doing it. You are on something. Now, I don't know about you. It's a whole, look, he scams both men and women. What you said, Autumn, I heard that too, but we're going to get to that. I, look, men do this. You know, they be playing psychological warfare and playing games. You know your man when, you know, you back in the day anyway, when you could see who liked, other, you, you know, other people's things. He would block his woman because he don't want to see, he don't want her to see him liking some girl's bikini pictures. And you know, you know that they be liking other girls' bikini pictures and stuff. And we be like, why you, why you like her picture? Why'd you like her picture? I understand. Why did you like her picture? So he blocked her so she wouldn't see who he liking, who he's following, all of that jazz. You know, y'all know the drill. Y'all know the drill. So here goes some more text message. This goes on forever. So here goes Jennifer saying, I'm not hungry now. I just had some coffee and fruit from the lobby, but I need to check out by 12. He says, okay. Hold on, let me make it big. He says, okay. She said, this is November 8th. 
call me it's saying add air to this tire is 21 right front tire how far are you he says traffic she says like 20 minutes or more question mark she he says yeah about 45 minutes away she said that's too long i have to go get my makeup done i'm already took all of all of my stuff out of the range I'll leave the keys in the cup holder and you could come get it whenever. And he says, damn, okay, if you're getting all of that done, I won't have anyone to help me bring back my car. He, she says, you can't get one of your friends to follow you with it? And that sounds like she asking to put air in the tire. If I ask you to put air in my tire, I'm not asking you to, to steal the car and go sell it. Anyway, I digress. That was in November, so he's still going backwards busy now what are you doing did i do something to you you are that busy you can't take a few minutes out of your day to call me because i needed to ask you something he says no you haven't done anything to me i've been busy and really haven't felt like talking much i thought that you had texted me what you wanted when you said when you said what i don't know okay then uh, here's another one she's saying you also never said you would help me every time i try and contact you you after dark you disappear. Oh, you know how them players do. You know, when they get after dark, you don't hear from them. you might hear from them at lunchtime, but if they got a woman, woman, you ain't gonna hear from them when it go, uh -uh. anyway. It seems like you are on some other shit. You got some other shit going on again. I'm used to figuring it out alone, so it's no big deal. I hate asking for anything anyway. I just wouldn't do it to you, but it's all good. And he said, Okay. So there's that. This is that same text message. What is this? Oh, then he claims that he paid off the Range Rover that he's accused of stealing. So what? You paid it off, but where is that? Anyway, he says, um, I've spent so much money on Jennifer Williams. It's ridiculous that she would make these accusations. I have never stolen from her. I dropped the down payment for a Ferrari. I gave her 33K to pay off the very Range Rover I'm accused of stealing, as well as giving her tens of thousands of more dollars as gifts, too. She did the same for me, bought me a Bentley, gave me tens of thousands of dollars, paid for vacation trips. Everything was mutual. And if anybody is out of pocket, it's me. For anybody to say I stole or tricked them into giving me money is ridiculous. I've never stolen a car, washed a title, or retagged a vehicle. He's being real specific. I mean, he's being real specific. I don't even know how to do that. I've worked as a consultant middleman in numerous deals. Most were successful and some fell through, but I never scammed anyone. These accusations are lies. Hashtag Aaron Nichols. Woo child. Woo child. Woo child. Mm, 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 mm. She asked him to put air in the tire. Where is the car? Where is the car? <laughs> I don't know where the guy is. We still don't know where the guy is. So let, let, let me finish looking at let's what was we looking at before? Hold on, hold on, hold on. So let's go back to finish what Jennifer was saying when she, she was talking about the um hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me go back to this. So let me go back to this. Where were we? She started talking about lipstick alley. Oh no, because she's talking about lipstick. Alley. So you guys have been dating at that time. Were you still in a relationship? No. Okay, so this was like an ex, but you guys were still cool. So he was doing you a favor. Yes, and I'm with Atlanta. I don't know a lot of people there. He was in the car business. Oh no. And he was, you know, he was like, listen, I can hold the car for you. It's, it's not a big deal. And I was like, okay, like great. I didn't have anywhere to put the car, and I was leaving out of town. So. I figure, all right, well, I'll just give you my car to put up, not to drive around, but just to hold my vehicle. And then he just never gave it back. Now, some people were saying, I noticed, oh, well, don't you Google somebody when you're dating them? How do you not know this? Had you met any of his family members, any of his friends? And had you Google the name that he gave you as his name? Yes, I did Google his name and nothing comes up because one is not his real name. He told me his name was Daniel Nichols. And what I have learned throughout this whole process is that he goes by different alias. And so I had met uh, one of his daughters, but I mean, 
she wasn't going to tell me his real name. You know, she calls him dad. So I met some people that were his friends, but he goes by Nick. So he doesn't even go by his real name because his last name is Nichols. So that's just kind of his nickname. Okay. So now you said you found this article on Lipstick Alley once you discovered what his real name was. And that's what led you to Ramona, right? Yes. Lipstick so Alley. <clears throat> Ramona, oh, um, to you and the article that you wrote, what was in it and how you and Jennifer connected. Okay. Um, I was involved with Nick from 2004 until about 2010. Um, in the beginning of 2011, a woman contacted me. I'm not exactly sure how she got my information, but she contacted me and it turns out that she was the mother of one of his children. We, um, compared stories and talked about, you know, some of the things that he had done. And we realized that this information needed to be out there. When I first got involved with him, just as Jennifer stated, there was nothing on him on the internet. And you can Google everyone and get some information about everyone. So I thought it was kind of interesting that nothing came up. So we decided that we were actually going to develop a web page that had a lot of information about him. He was able to get that web page removed, you know, some years ago. So um, she also put up a ripoff report in regards to him. And then I chose to post on Lipstick Alley and connect the ripoff report and talk about my dealings with him. Um, the post, you know, only got but so much um, attention. And it wasn't until most recently that um, I guess it was brought to Jennifer's attention and we connected and started to um, compare stories about this person. Now, I hadn't seen him in over a decade. So I was surprised that he was still doing, you know, these things. So what is it that he did to you, like, specifically? Um, well, when I met him, um, just as uh, Jennifer had stated, he gave me a different name. He actually told me his name was Nick Clark. And a few, um, maybe a few months into the relationship, I found out that his name was actually Aaron Nichols. Um, at the time, he told me he was a retired athlete. He told me, and of course, that you couldn't Google that. Um, he told me that he was involved in numerous businesses, um, and I did see, you know, the luxury cars, and there was a lot in Las Vegas that housed a number of these luxury cars. At the time, um, I had my own car, my own vehicle that I was making payments on, and he stated, you know, if we're going to be in a relationship, you know, we should upgrade your car. And I told him, you know, I'm still making payments on the car. He suggested that we return the car and then just get a new car. So I felt uneasy about that, but I gave him my car to return to the dealership. He never did. The car just kind of disappeared and I was still making payments on it. I was making payments on it until, you know, it was a charge off. Now at the time, again, I was still in a relationship with him. So I was in other vehicles. He had me in numerous luxury cars, so even though I was still making payments on the other car, I really didn't just think much of it. There were other instances where he would ask for me to pick up a luxury car in a certain state and then deliver it to a different state. Um, he stated again that he was a dealer and these were people that were leasing or financing or purchasing the cars from him. Now, the places where I picked up these cars were dealerships but they weren't his. Oh, right. He also stated that he had a cleaning company. He stated that, um, you know, he had different foundations. So he had a number of businesses, but all of the businesses were attached to a post office box that I used as well. There were no physical addresses for any of these buildings, or um, for any of these businesses. Um, but again, this was the person I chose to be in a relationship with, so I believed him when he told me whatever it was. At the conclusion of the relationship, as I mentioned when I spoke with um, the mother of one of his children, that's when we found out that, again, all of these things were fictitious and you know, he had been doing this to a number of women. And that's why we chose to put that post up. Now, what happened when both of you contacted the police or did you contact the police? Then, oh, then this is, oh, okay. Let me let me stop here because, well, um, okay, for me, well so let me I listen to this. My, my car was stolen, so I contacted the Smyrna police because that's where the car got taken from. And to be honest with you, it's been it's been a little over a month, and there hasn't been any resolution. You know, they they literally just put my car in as stolen. Okay, so she contacted the police. The police have put the car as stolen. 
Now, my thing is, okay, so Aaron went to the damn Twitter before he, I mean, the uh, Instagrams before he went to the police. Like, they reported it to the police. Why not go to the police and prove all these things? Why do you have to prove it to the court of public opinion? Posting that the Range Rover is paid off, what is that proving? If you stole the Range Rover, you stole the Range Rover. And I understand people feel like, I don't know what Jennifer's history is. Y'all keep talking about Tim from Sweetie and she's called out all these other men and all this thing. But the thing is, what does that have to do with this particular situation? If somebody takes your car and does not bring it back, I don't care if you gave me $30,000 four days ago. I didn't sell you the car. I didn't say you can keep the car. I said put some air in my car tire. Where is my car? And so that is the art of the finesse. It's the long con. What he had been doing was giving her a little bit here and taking a little bit there. Giving her a little bit here and taking her a little bit there. And in Atlanta, it's the home of the credit cards and the scammers, honey. Men do it all the time here. I look, I've been a victim of it. Dudes will take advantage of you if you let them. If you let them, but there are some who are a little bit tricky. They kind of snake their way into your life. They they make they build trust. Like she said, she knew him in LA. She knew him in Atlanta. She know he traveled to Detroit and all of these other places. She know, but she just knows his nickname. But perhaps she has seen him for five, 10 years or whatever. Then they decide to get into some kind of you know romantic situation. Exactly. They gain your trust. And so people who are looking at this sideways it's like it could happen to you that person in your life who you thought you have you've been knowing for 10 years may steal some money from you and get, get ghosts he admitted he even said in his own text messages i'm i'm working with a counselor right now because i'm not good at in relationships that's what i do I get ghosts. He probably get ghosts after he done took somebody's money took somebody's car and all that so I don't know. I was looking on when I looked when I looked on Lipstick Alley and they said this man has done it to several different women. Like, look, I don't know if it's a coincidence. I'm not sure. But apparently the same person, Aaron Nichols, a.k.a. Nick Clark, like we were saying earlier. Hold on. Let me put this in there. Aaron Nichols, a.k.a. <laughs> Nick Clark, like they said on Lipstick Alley, he has used these flashy cars to impress women and swindle them out of money, honey. And so when you look at that, like he's from Detroit, but originally in Atlanta, he's done business in Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Miami, Phoenix. He claims to be an ex-football player. He claims he's an ex-boxer. He claims he's in entertainment. He claims he's an ex, but he's an ex-felon who steals from everyone he knows he also is usually in a luxury car is more than likely stolen it's probably jennifer williams range rover honey he's probably driving her range and let her drive some other woman's car yeah he's bouncing around he claims he owns real estate it's just like dude like when you meet these people Atlanta is home of the credit cards and the scammers. People come and move to Atlanta to pretend to be something that they are not. It is Black Hollywood. Like, and I know, I know, I know, I know people like, it's sad that so many women are, are so gullible. I see you, Isis Red. But I don't feel like that's, the, like, there are some gullible rim, women. I give you that. There are some gullible women. But there are also some finessers out there who can finesse the draws off uh, 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 of anybody. I'm just saying and in doing so they also fill in a bank account again they transfer money from that woman's account to your account and then borrow money from you later on and say they're gonna give it back and then <laughs> scammers finessers that is what people do so my thing is i don't like the fact that that the reason that most of these women who have been victims of people like this don't come forward is because of the embarrassment is because of the judgment is because of people like y'all who be like oh she's so stupid it must have been the dick 
Oh, she's so stupid. It must have been this. Oh, she should have been, you know, she should have did more research. She should have did. That's the same thing as putting blame on the victim. Just like y'all be talking about the little girls at R. Kelly. They should have did this. They should have did that. How you blame the little girls? In this situation, how you blaming the women for getting their money or they car stolen? Where is the Range Rover? Where is the Range Rover? So I don't care whether you gave me $30,000 to put down on a Ferrari. I don't give a damn. Our relationship is over and you took my Range Rover and you didn't bring it back. Where is the Range Rover? I'm just saying. So people, you know, are in their feelings about GM because of who she is, because she's on a reality show, because, you know, she's been involved with other people in the past. Um, but I don't know that she's lying. If she filed a police report, I mean, why can't we let the police deal with it? Why Why didn't he go to the police? Why are we like sitting here speculating about what had happened on the Internet? Where is the Aaron Nichols dude? Then I go look up. I go look up the damn Aaron Nichols account after he posts all these texts and the dude that deleted his damn Instagram. Why? Because all the women he just scammed before was trying to find him and they found that damn Instagram and now they was trying to like locate where exactly he is. Don't nobody know where he is. Where is Nick, whatever his name is? Where, is, where you at? We saw you on the Instagram for a hot second and then you disappeared. Where is the Range Rover? Where is these ladies' money? I want to know. It was all a scheme set up by Todd. Todd don't have nothing to do with this. I want to know where the Range Rover is. I don't care what, I don't even care if Jennifer has said that those texts that he released were fake. That's what she said. She said those texts were fake. Hold on, let's go back to them. She said that, um, she said that, you know, you know, he doctored, he doctored them up, but I, you know, I'm, I'm prone to believe you know, even if he didn't doctor these texts, even if he didn't, what does what she have to say about Shawnee? Or what does what she have to say about her castmates? What does any of that have to do with her lost Range Rover? That's what I want to know. I just want to know what a Range Rover is and why you stole it and why you won't bring it back. That's what I want to know. Hold on. Let me find it. Let me go to text again. What y'all think? You said this can happen to anyone, even if they're real. Where's my car? Exactly. Where is my vehicle? I don't care what I said. And then what's up with all these catty ass men who go online to try to drag women? Like what is like what, what part of the game is that? What part of the game is that? And like he is releasing more about himself than he is about her. So now we all we all can see what you are. Hold on, what he has said. Hold on. I want to I want to go back when he said he was in counseling, child. He said he is in here. It is Jennifer moved to Georgia to be with me. Okay, whatever, whatever. She begged me, blah 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 blah. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, I I admit that I have just ghosted women without explanation, and that's left them very angry with me and wanting vengeance. But recently, since I've been seeing a counselor, I have tried to be better in how I end relationships with people. This is why I first tried to talk to hashtag with Jennifer Williams face to face about wanting to end it, but she wouldn't take no for an answer. I ended up having to block her phone numbers too. And not once did I ask for any car, jewelry, or purse, or money back. You can't ask for no money back. You dating, you deal with women, you buy women purses and cars and all that. What you don't do is take money from, from women. That's what you don't do. A man who takes one money from women, what is that? What is that? What do y'all think that is? Mm-mm. You know, y'all call it dumb for giving it, but you know, he, he's showing what his his uh what his what he is by taking the money. I'm just saying, you know, I've always been told men don't work, don't eat. It's up to the man to you know generate the revenue. It's up to the men, like don't be loaning nobody no money, especially no man. Like <laughs> just so you said a pimp. <laughs> a gigolo, a pimp. Oh my god, he don't had a car anymore pity pot he wanted to do the public to be on his side what you said i'm on one tonight mm. he on one tonight child he on one tonight hold on look i want to see what y'all got to say i'm about to put this i'm about to put this link in here 
Y'all let me know whose fault is it? Whose fault is it? Was it Jennifer's fault? For handing over the keys to the range I uh, was it Aaron Nicholas Nick Carter Nick Aaron Nick whatever the hell his name is this week was it his fault for ghosting her and not calling her back and not giving her her car back is it his fault is it her fault? whose fault is it I just want to know and uh, let me know tell me this if it was you and you said they both scammed <laughs> He conned her. I'm just saying, if it was you in this situation where a friend disappeared with your property, how would you feel? Let me know.